This chapter really threw me for a loop in the sense that I really didn't expect any of this to happen. I actually thought that the rage mode from Big Mom was going to be automatic. But no, it actually took the entire chapter to activate, you know, because she's so confused about what's making her the most angry. Uh, we open up with a, a shot of Cavendish's ship, so that's cool. We're going to get some cover story here based off of the Grand Fleet. We know they're, they have to do something important later down the road that's going to cause a major event to happen. So I can't wait to see what, what that is. I'm not sure it's going to happen in the cover story. In fact, it probably won't. But at least I'm pretty sure we're going to get some hints or foreshadowing about, you know, that upcoming event. Uh, that being said, the opening shot of this chapter uh, got me a little bit confused because it's Big Mom attacking Luffy and Jimbei. Both of them are dodging the attack, but she's only using Prometheus to attack them. Did you notice that? Like, Zeus is up in the up in the corner there floating, but he's just normal. I mean, granted, Zeus probably won't do anything against Luffy because Luffy doesn't conduct electricity because he's made out of rubber. And Prometheus, I'm not really sure he would be the most effective in terms of dealing with Jimbei just because Jimbei is a water user and Prometheus is fire. So it's kind of like these guys kind of cancel these other guys out in a way. Um, that being said, if I were Big Mom, I would just be using hockey. Just, just, or, or use Napoleon and hockey. Uh, but I guess she's just so in shock that that doesn't really matter for this entire chapter anyway. I actually think it's kind of cool that Brooke has the balls to reveal his face to Big Mom after destroying the picture. Even though, like, it serves for a major, major funny gag where it's like, oh my gosh, he peeled the skin right off of his face. <laughs> that was really cool. So yeah, it's just like, hey, I did this with the hammer. So it's kind of like Jimbei with the sake cup, just like, you know, screw you, big mom. And he actually trolls her too, because she's like, wait a minute, sulking, I thought you were dead. And Brooke was like, yeah, I am. Young lady. There's actually a pretty well-drawn panel of Luffy and Jimbei waiting for the panic to start. I thought that was really cool. Also, Jimbei later on, like, uses armament hockey on his arms to fight some of the ministers. Uh, there's this shot of, like, Sanji dodging some of some of putting shots uh, because she's still I mean she's still kind of crazy she still wants to shoot him but it's easy peasy for, for, for I mean if you can dodge an attack from Katakuri and dodging a shot from pudding even at that distance shouldn't be that difficult for Sanji uh, you see the after image you know he's moving like like Neo and this is actually something that I thought about the first time he did it when we saw the after image for the first time you know how he trained under Ivankov so Ivankov has this ability called the Galaxy Wink, where he actually starts moving really, really fast, and he creates all these after images, and then he attacks his opponent. I'm pretty sure that that's something that Sanji's gonna be able to do as well. Just create a lot of after images of Sanji, and then just go in for the attack. So it's kind of like, it's the same attack, but it's just happening so quickly that you think it's happening multiple times at the same time. Pudding's eyes, all three of them actually are teary, and she's like, don't you know I've deceived countless of people with this? So you can tell that she has mixed feelings about trying to just end Sanji. I honestly think she's not even putting in her best effort anymore. I think she's just completely broken internally. And so she says like, I've deceived so many people, and and Sanji gets a very good line in this chapter. He's like, yeah, and were you yourself one of those people that you deceived Pudding? But then they have to dodge an attack coming in from Daifuku because Daifuku is just pissed off at like the fact that Pudding is just not doing anything. It's like, you should have done this when you had the chance. You're trash, Pudding, get out of the way. Let me deal with this. And it's actually the genie coming out of his stomach uh, armament hockey genie, which by the way reminds me a lot of Virgo, so maybe this is Oda's way of kind of like making up for the Virgo fight. So I guess now we know who Sanji's opponent is in this arc. I know a lot of people wanted him to fight a higher tier dude, and maybe he will, but it's still like, I think this is something that Oda wanted to, wanted to set up. I think this is a matchup that Oda wanted. So, uh, Daifuku, there's this one panel where you see Daifuku throwing something at Pudding's head. I actually think he actually knocks her out, because she yells like, ah! And then Sanji's like, pudding! So, you know that's gonna piss Sanji off because he's very protective of women. So it just it just makes more sense that this would be the fight that he gets for the arc. Daifuku, actually, I mean, the genie, actually, his, his arm in hockey isn't a game. I mean, he actually punches Sanji. I don't know how far he went, but he just went crashing. It's a little bit weird because at first you do see Sanji block the spear. Like, when he, when he does the, the Maji, like, Sanji blocks that... So I don't know if it's Maji, Jiden, I don't know if it's all just one attack or if it's Maji, one attack, Jiden, second attack. Because once he does the Jiden part, like that sends Sanji flying. But at first he was able to block the spear. But the good thing is that Sanji gets up after that pretty quickly because we see him struggle with the Daifuku genie later on in the chapter. By the way, is, is Caesar running away? What the hell's going on with that? Like, I think, okay, here's what I think. I think Oda wants us to think that he's running away but he has a surprise in store. 
So yeah, I, I haven't lost my faith in that coward. Tamago's nowhere to be found, so instead we get Pedro versus Oven. Jimmy tells him, don't block the attacks because he can heat up everything that touches him, and that kind of burns Pedro's hand a little bit. I wonder if he had used hockey on the blade. You think that would have happened? Anyway, Brooke's head just rolls off of his body. Like, this is a, this is a total shit mess, all right? And then Sanji says something that I've been thinking this entire time while reading the chapter, which is, this is not the way things are supposed to be happening. What the hell is going on? Like, this is all out of place. And we have Nami, Chopper, and Carrot still hiding because they're the ones in charge of the rescue. But the Vinsmokes are actually stuck to their chairs with candy, and they're being held at gunpoint at, at this time. And Judge just starts crying. I mean, what a, what a punk-ass bitch. I mean, I'm sorry. This was just so disappointing. Like, they had no idea they were going to be betrayed. Like, the Vinsmokes are just sitting there, like, with, with no emotions, which, I mean, that's how big of a screw-up Judge is, that they don't even feel anything for the fact that they're about to be murdered in cold blood. Which, by the way, given the fact that it was introduced in last week's chapter, or in you know, the last chapter, that Big Mom's ability doesn't work unless you fear death, that may actually come into play and be a benefit for the Vinsmokes. So there you go. There's another group of people in this party that will not be affected by Big Mom's ability of taking away life. Uh, I mean, Yonji and Niji are even laughing at this point. Like, it's kind of creepy and weird, but it also makes me feel bad for them in a very awkward way. I don't feel bad for Judge, because these are just the consequences of his own stupidity, but I do feel bad for the brothers. And you know what? Just the fact that he's breaking down like this, and by the way, Pero Spero is there to psychologically break him down too, which I thought was, was a neat touch because Big Mom is out of commission for the time being. So he's just breaking like, I want you to see how much of a screw up you really are, Judge. And he, he's falling for it. He's completely broken down. He's like tearing up. And so I think what's going to happen is that he's just he's just cornered right now. His other sons just don't care. I think this punk ass bitch is going to end up yelling out for Sanji to help. Going to be like, son, help us, please. After all this time, the son that you thought was the weakest is the one who's going to save your ass. Anyway, since Big Mom is in shock, Luffy and Brooke agreed that they have to show the broken fragments of the picture to Big Mom so that she can actually lose it. And Capo I love this scene because Capone's like, what? No, are you stupid? That's not going to work. And then he sees Katakuri approaching and he sees his face and he's like, go on, go for it. I know it's going to work because I've seen the face of Katakuri and he's seen the future and he knows this is going to be horrible. So go ahead and do it, Straw Hat. I'll grant you some cover. Boys. <laughs> Lock him in position. Get those earplugs ready. Jimbei, Pedro, hold this line. Nothing gets through here. Grant the straw hats cover with everything you got. This is about to get real heavy. The scene kind of has a similar echo to the scene in Marineford where Whitebeard pretty much tells all of his commanders to help Ace's brother out uh, during the war. And I think this is kind of like another example of what Mihawk said was Luffy's greatest power, which is that he has the ability to make allies gradually out of everyone he meets. So I think Capone, especially with last week's chapter, when we saw that face that Capone made when he found out that Luffy revealed himself out of all the clones, I think that face was a direct reference to the Law face when Law said that he didn't like bread because he began to realize that, oh my gosh, I'm slowly becoming like one of them. I'm gravitating to, to the Straw Hats and it just happens without you even noticing it. So I think what's gonna happen is, you know, remember when they were talking about the plan to take down Big Mom, Capone specifically said, after the operation is over, we split. We go our separate ways. We don't even say goodbye to each other. We just we just go our separate ways. But I think what's going to end up happening, it's like he's going to end up going to Wano. Like, it's just like, Luffy's going to be like, I mean, what else do you have that you need to do? And Capone's going to be like, damn it! Especially after what he said in this chapter. I mean, that was such a will of D moment. It's like, you can only see a little bit into the future, but it doesn't matter. Because anyone has the power to change it. It was almost like a Blackbeard moment, like the one in Jaya when he says, the dreams of men will never end. So yeah, it was, it was such a cool thing. It, it looked epic. Like that was a great ending. You know, this, this uh, chapter was about Capone shining. Uh, and then last week's was about Jimbei shining and Brooke has been shining consistently throughout the arc. So I'm guessing we're going to get a Sanji moment pretty soon. I'm still waiting. I gotta be honest, I'm still waiting on some Katakuri feats. Me personally, I think that Big Mom and Katakuri will not be going down this arc, and it's precisely, well, one of my main reasons for that is precisely the lack of feats that we've seen from him. I think I think Oda is, is intentionally keeping those things in the dark so that when they shine, we'll be super impressed. But right now, it's like, plus we got the reverie coming up, so yeah, it just, 
Imagine if they if Katakuri went down this arc, it'd just be like what Big Mom and Smoothie. No, it just it just wouldn't make a lot of sense. And there's too much build up for both of them, I think, at this point. And we're short on time too, because again, we have we have the Reverie starting, and we know that the editor said that Wano will be starting uh, before the end of of 2017. Um, so once again, guys, I mean, I really enjoyed this chapter. It was such a good read. A lot of stuff going on, a lot of shifts, and uh, yeah, it's just it's just waiting for that pot to boil. So that it actually explodes and I'm pretty sure it'll explode next week. So uh, thank you for watching. Like the video if you did. I appreciate that. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't for more One Piece related content. Catch you guys later. Thank you. Bye.